During World War II, Nazi Germany was well known for its advanced armoured vehicle design, designed for tanks that just got bigger and bigger. There was the Panther, a 44-ton medium tank and one of the finest vehicles of World War II. Then, the Tiger I, a 54-ton monster that was effective, though expensive and complex to make. Then came the Tiger II, or King Tiger, the largest German tank to see action in World War II, a 68-ton behemoth that was virtually impregnable to Allied tank and anti-tank guns, but let down by an inadequate power source and complex manufacture. And finally, the heaviest armoured vehicle yet to see combat, the 71-ton Jagdtiger tank destroyer. But incredibly, German designers went one step beyond these massive vehicles to produce a tank of such gargantuan proportions that it appeared an act of madness, the Panzerkampfwagen 8, or Maus. Weighing an astonishing 188 tons, Germany only managed to build two of these vehicles before the war ended. But what was the reasoning behind such a seemingly illogical design? The Maus originated with Dr. Porsche, and Hitler, a great exponent of bigger and more heavily armoured vehicles, approved the design in June 1942. It was originally going to be called the Mammoth, but ended up with the innocuous name of Maus. On the 1st of May 1943, a wooden mock-up of the mouse was shown to Hitler. He liked it. The tracks were 1.1 meters wide, and the vehicle was propelled by a V12 petrol engine, later changed in the second prototype to a diesel. The mouse was 10.2 meters, or 33 feet 6 inches long, 3.71 meters, or 12 foot 2 inches wide, and stood 3.63 meters, or 11 foot 11 inches tall. The crew of six operated inside thick armour. The turret front was 220 millimetres, or 8.7 inches thick. The sides and rear 200 millimetres, or 7.9 inches. The hull front was the same thickness as the turret sides, and the vulnerable rear end 150 millimetres, or 5.9 inches. Hitler insisted that the Mauser's main armament was the 128mm KWK-44 gun, with 68 rounds, plus a 75mm gun as a coaxial secondary armament. So what use was such a behemoth on the battlefield? It was intended that the Maus be a virtually indestructible breakthrough tank, punching through the enemy's line to open a breach for more regular Panzer and Panzergrenadier forces to exploit. The problem was transporting such a tank and crossing bridges. It was too heavy and would have to ford rivers instead. The first actual prototype, V1, was a turretless test vehicle finished in December 1943. A mocked up turret the same weight as the real design was added. Then in June 1944, V1 received a test turret with a real gun and began firing tests. V2, the second prototype, was delivered in March 1944. It received a production turret and a diesel engine. Neither tank saw action, despite rumours on the internet. In 1945, both Maus prototypes were at the Kummersdorf testing facility. V2 was sent to Wunsdorf to protect the Army High Command bunker complex from the rapidly approaching Red Army. It was parked outside the Maybach 1 bunker and was blown up before the Soviets captured it. V1 was also destroyed but was not as badly damaged as V2. Soviet engineers decided to assemble one complete tank from the two wrecked prototypes. It was a difficult process due to the vehicle's extreme weight. V2's turret weighed 55 tons, the same as a complete Tiger 1. In order to pull the turret clear of the wrecked hull, they used six captured German 18-ton Farmo half-tracks. Mated successfully with V1's hull, the complete mouse arrived in the Soviet Union for a variety of tests in May 1946. The Soviets didn't think the design had any practical uses, and today the mouse is on display at the Kubinka Tank Museum, an enduring monument to how not to design and build tanks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share and help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.